Hi everyone and welcome back to uh, Producer Nerd. Um, I'm having a lot of fun doing these mixes for you guys and hoping that you um, are enjoying them as well. The videos are quite long and I'm sorry about that but um, <clears throat> I like to uh, and plus I'm working fairly fast. Um, I'm trying to explain what I'm doing as I go. Um, hopefully I've got my mic on and hopefully um, you can hear me and um, get something out of my approach. Uh, this is a, an offline song. Um, if you've seen the video about making a video, um, the, you'll see that there is an, an app that allows a band to play all at once to record these um, these offline ones. Um, and because of COVID, we're sort of um, this is the way that we're doing them these days. <clears throat> um, the track that we that I'm going to mix today is Kiri from Mister Mister. Um, Richard Page is a very um, you know, one of my favourite singers, and Mr. Mister from the 80s is uh, a fantastic band, and um, it really, I think, Richard Page is to Mr. Mister uh, the same as David Coverdale is to Whitesnake. You know, it really is the guy is the band, and he's the, you know, the principal writer, and um, he's, his voice and persona and the whole brand is really a fantastic sound. This particular track... I know fairly well, and I know that you know it's got very airy backing vocals, and some, and a lot of them. Um, so I needed everyone to sing. So we chose even down to um, using Brad Pelaine on drums because he's got such a high voice, can sing the top line. Um, so um, let's get into it. Let me explain how this um, all started. So we're looking at all of the files here, um, all lined up. I'll just take a few things out, <coughs> and. Um, start with drums. Now the original track started with an arrangement done by Condello and um, he um, he employed uh, Dave Ross, uh, our second keyboard player, to uh, do an arrangement, a basic one. So you know we, we spat out a, a click track and a guide keyboard uh, line. Remember this song starts at 108 beats a minute and then goes to 90 because the arpeggiator in the intro just went a little faster so um, we only needed to give people the click for uh, for drums and stuff like that for the stuff from 90 beats a minute so there was a little arpeggiated bass came in so this is what was given to the drummer um, he knows that from from where you know where he needs to come in by um, you know he knows the song he knows that from that point um, vocals come in at a certain point he's got a click track as well to play along to and he was the first one so by hearing the keyboard guide he knew where he was. And from that um, I'll just mute those and get rid of those. From that. Um, he did his drum track, so... <clears throat> this is his data. And of course... Of course Brad also gave us um, his, his video as well, so if I can grab... Uh, see, Brad... Uh, Brad drums. So uh, I'll just give you a quick look at his from where he comes in over here. So this is what the camera heard. So it's pretty raw. So this is his video. He's got a nice camera, nice room. Uh, he's using a Mackie uh, desk that is a, a Firewire interface at the same time. So he's got a room mic, um, kick snare, rack floor, two overheads, his vocal mic, and um, and the room mics. So that made uh, eight, eight tracks. Worked out great. Sounds good. Um, and he gave me the video. So along with that, we did um, bass next. So... We chose the take. This is the raw audio. And 
and then uh, let's have a have a look at the video. <clears throat> Take three. Remember the intro is a sort of a keyboard thing. So really, Dave on the keys and the singer were the, were going to be you know Dave would have put that down and the singer they they're last on the train. So everyone just needed to start from an, an, a more forward point in the song. Con is playing along to a basic mix of the drums along with that uh, guide keyboard part. Gives, it gives us his video and the data. Uh, next came guitar from Jan. Uh, where's Jan's video? Now if you um, if you've seen the actual video you'll see that Jan um, started the video this is his video here <coughs> he's playing through um, an amp sim and he's giving me his clean line separate <coughs> not an amp sim he's got his processors sorry um, And um, his video is fantastic. So, so he gave me his full take as well, um, and video. Um, his audio's here. There's some clean lines down here as well. Great working with professionals, isn't it? Um, okay. <clears throat> um, then from there, I've got everyone's backing vocals in here as well. So as they gave me their part, they've sung their, their backing vocal for me as well. And I've got everyone to give me an extra in case I need an extra, um, an extra backing vocal. So just give me the one as you're doing your thing and then give me another. Um, so, <clears throat> um, wall of backing vocals also uh, Glenn was the last guy so from there we went to keys uh, which is these guys here this is uh, Dave Ross now he's um, he's giving me the pad intro all the way through and then through to And the synth. Um, da, da, da. So you know you've got a few of, of those parts that that were once they were in. We had a nice little time um, for Glenn Cunningham to sing. So I got Glenn's vocals. Um, just give you a quick look at Dave's uh, Dave's video. So Dave did his stuff here. <clears throat> He had worked out a nice little um, click um, version for his, you know, tempo map. Etc. So um, everyone had, you know, has to give you their video as well. Uh, Glenn, his vocals are here. Now he's, um, he's got a really cool little studio of his own. Um, you may know Glenn from The Voice in Australia if you are, um, uh, Glenn, just looking for his vocals here, like that. Have a look. His, uh, in the light, curious and down the road that I must travel. Hey. So, you know, he gave me his in portrait. I needed that that way, and um, his vocals sound great. Okay, this is coming in. Heart is old, it broke my memories. My body burns with gem like flame. Somewhere between the soul and soft machine. I've added um, a, a pad sound, piano pad. 
myself. So. Uh, set myself up out on the deck and did my um. You follow. And did my video as well. Um, so now I also um, got two uh, unisons from um, from Glenn, so I could put those in the backing vocal mix. We'll eventually get to those. Um, let's start with the drums now. Um, I'm going to just solo these guys. <clears throat> Kick, snare. This one here is a, a duplicate uh, for that I'll create for you um, so I can trigger another little snare sound. Overheads. And a room mic. That sounds fantastic. I did put in a tambo trap because it it went with the intro, so I might just add that to our drum sound at the moment. Here it is raw. Okay, so. Everything sounds pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go through and, and do a little bit of EQing now. Starting with our kick, I'm going to um, put on our trigger. So I'm just going to start with uh, my setting of of trigger here. Now I'm using Slate's trigger. I'm doing this to save some time, and I've and this is our signature kick sound. So there's, that's the old one, and that's the new one. <clears throat> okay, now also what's happening here is I've got an R bass poking 63 hertz. Um, that's my body blow kick position, 63 hertz. Um, and I'm just, I'm pushing that and I've got an L2 squashing it by another six so I can keep the kicks really consistent and up front. All those little ones coming through very, you know, so the kick doesn't drop in volume much. Um, that's a, a very solid kick straight away out, out of the box like that. Um, the kick that I'm using in that trigger, by the way, is the Kick 6 Z3, which is inside your trigger, um, you know, off the shelf of buying that uh, slate trigger plug-in. Snare. I'm going to use the um, Slate Infinity EQ on this. Fantastic EQ. I haven't used this on a mix video before. I love it. It's very, um, I mean, it's not even noticeable latency if it has any. I think it's, you know, I don't, I don't think anything's zero latency, but this one's pretty close. Check it out. <clears throat> All right, the normal um, guys here. I like to get rid of the rings. The analyzer is showing you what to do anyway, right? Now, I, I, I do want to give it a bit of a lift so I can get those little ghosties that he's playing on there. Ooh, the little 200 hertz, I think I'll leave in there. Um, let's have a look at um, toms. Put them together. I will also... 
bust them. Let's just bust them. Toms. So we can treat them both together. Now one of these guys, I think it's the floor there. It's got a fairly big, um, you know, ring. I'm going to go to single band EQ and low cut it. I think I'm okay with about there. You know, I mean, I don't want to go too much below 80 hertz. This guy here's got a little bit of a, you know, I could definitely put a infinity EQ and fix that. It's just a little boxy. Um, let me just give it a try. Yeah, so to me, it sounds like too many, just the low mids around here, 200 ish. Just pull them back, let some of the, the, the natural lows and probably a little bit of a bark in the middle as well. Let me just go crazy on here. Add a little bit of tops, a little nose. It's pretty good. Let's <clears throat> just enhance a little bit of some bottoms that we've, we've taken out, so I remember the right ones. Cut the guts out of the center. All right, so here's our toms. Virtual mix rack, let's slam them with a monster. Go full on first and let's hear what they sound like. Wow. Remember, compression's gonna bring in some of those low rings, so let's. Um... As I, as I change the elements and how they affect each other, um, you know, the compressor is going to react differently if I'm, t if I'm adding bass or I'm changing the preamp sound. It's all going to be relative to what's up, up the chain up here. So, quite bright and thin, but you know, you find um, if I, once I put my reverb on those guys, um, that's, they're going to be beautiful in the mix. Um, okay, let's go to our overheads, which I've already grouped. So I've hit my little group here, created a group, and I've made sure that um, on my group settings, I've pressed editing and solo. That's all I really need for, for my overheads. <clears throat> I'm also going to bust these guys. Overs, I have a presetting that I use for overs. Let's have a look at it. All right, for this particular kit. Let's have a look at all of the elements here. Now, the reason why I've thinned out that snare like that into that little tiny sharp sound is because of the, I mean, I, I do want the top, the, the hats and the crashes to sound zingy um, in my smiley face EQ of this whole track, but I, I'm adding all of the body of the snare from the actual body of the, of the snare mic. So I don't want the body of the snare to be in this particular overhead thing. I just want it to be hats and crashes and some, um, and that's really where I want it to stay. So by itself, it sounds a little bit, um, a little bit mid-range. I've taken those, you know, if I take this EQ off, that's more of a, you know, they're very harsh. 
But once I have got the, um, the, the, the reverb and stuff on that, that will make those, the overheads come together a whole lot more. So my virtual mix rack has the monster on it again, and some, some slamming that hard. Um, I've gone another EQ to add some top end. Remember this song has around 8K for that zing, around the backing vocals. Um, I have put a de-esser on in case on this particular setting in case I want to suppress the top end. Uh, I may do that and the L2 of course just is a babysitter limiter. So let's just um, have, have a quick look at the room. I don't want too much of this. That's really where I think it's really pushing so I want to Try and get the center out of touch. And I want to add more boom. And if anything, I'm going to want to uh, slam that harder with, you know, with it. Maybe even it's easier just to do it with an actual uh, a limiter like an L2. And bring it down so it's sort of pumping a little bit more. I don't need a lot of that, but that will be a really big part of the meat inside the kit. Uh, let's hear it all together now. Take. Okay, back to where we were raw. There's a little ooh that I'm hearing there, and I think that's on the floor, um, floor mic. Yes. So I'm thinking I need to find that and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. There's a harmonic of it. Pretty sure that's probably fixed it. Nice and dry, but nice and, you know, nice and slamming. So uh, let's move on to the bass. I don't think I need to do much of the bass. Maybe add a little bit of nose, just to give it a little bit of presence. Not a lot, um, working with professionals makes my job very easy. That one, um, Con's bass is direct out of his Galleon Kruger GK600 head. Straight out of the back of the head and into the interface. No compression. Guitars, guitars generally take up that um, the real estate of your vocals. You've got to be very careful. In this instance, in this song, um, I'm going to cut some of the mids out of at least the backing vocals as well, <clears throat> so that the guitar can stay sort of clangy. So I want that smiley face EQ on things. I want the the main vocal, even Glenn's vocal, to have the nose taken out. Um, of, of its EQ to accommodate the guitar and so that everything sounds some sort of nice and hi-fi but the guitar can rock on when it needs to. So I'm not going to really do, I'm not going to do any EQing on the guitar for now. It is very, very nice but it is MIDI. It 
it's all pretty well there. So I've panned it a little bit to the right um, just to get it all, you know, so it's not perfect on the thing, but I'm thinking that's pretty good. So um, the, the next parts were the keys. Um, my key part was really, like I said, a piano pad that I created in the, in the Core Chrome EX. Needed that sort of extra sparkle on it and just the, the pumping those notes. I mean, it's, it's a lot less complicated than what Dave had to do um, on his you know, the Jupiter bass and everything as well. So there's, I mean, the bass that Dave gave us on the, the arpeggiation, this sound is the bass until Con starts playing. So if I just put his, this track next to the bass, Let's get our favorite Infinity EQ from Slate. Let's check out this. Now, this is the bass until the bass comes in. So it's got to be the bass. It's got to be sounding <clears throat> nice and present on the bass. I want to take the R uh, out of the mids. Right there. Add a little bit more air. Definitely want to have some reverb. Um, let's choose our reverb now. <clears throat> Stereo um, bus. I'm going to go straight for the chroma verb. Dirty chamber. Just make sure that I just pull the, the mids down a little bit, low mids. This is the one. So let's just add it. little bit of chorus because it was the 80s man chorus on the keys and even a little bit more on the modulation these are logic plugins tremolo um, Now one more plugin is all needed, and that is just a single band EQ with a low cut, which I bring in when the bass kicks. So I go to my automation track. And I go to single band EQ frequency, find out where my bass comes in, right here. And I basically kick it in you know, well, 80 hertz, <clears throat> maybe even 90. So once the bass kicks, the bottom end from this arpeggiator, it leaves the building. Um, there is a, probably a bit later on in the song where, yep, so the arpeggiator also leaves. So I don't need any more bottom end in this arpeggiator, but I definitely need it in the top. So um, when the bass comes in, Comes thinner. Heart is old, it holds my memory. My body burns with gem like flame. Let's add that same reverb to the vocals. Swift between the soul and soft machine. See how the vocals are a little midi, so if I can take some of those out. Infinity. Heart is old, it holds my memory. Now I'm pushing these up so you can hear what I'm what I'm thinking. What what's the frequency I want to cut? Heart is old, it holds my memory. Definitely that. My body burns with gem like 
still love the air, so I still want some of that, especially around the 6, 7K, right? 8K? Somewhere between the soul and submachine It's where I find myself So I've, I've taken a little bit out of just straight around the middle, put, done a low cut. <clears throat> this is a raw vocal file. I've added a little bit more of a body on the bottom. I'm gonna wanna compress him. So um, for this, let me just go to uh, my slate, VMR. I do have a vocal setting. I'll try and get these settings to you guys um, as well so you can download them all if you like. Um, trimmer. Vocal, so I like the Brit setting on that. Um, not the SSL, but the Neve EQ. Um, the, the FG401 is, is the type of spongy compressor great for vocals. Um, Custom Series will give me air. Um, on this, I might even just use the Revival, so it'll give me some really extra air. Um, and the trimmer in the ends for my gain. So gain it back a bit. All right, let's, let's just take off the reverb and the EQ that I've just done. Let's hear that again, the vocals. Yeah, let's get some reverb on the overheads, on that snare. On the toms, remember there we've got a bus, we'll put some on the toms. Uh, some synth here, that could do, now this is the same reverb fed from multiple things. Everything belongs, everything's going to be in the same space. A little bit um, on the guitar, just a touch, it's got a fair bit of effects on there anyway. Um, definitely on the little fluty intro. Um, this track definitely does need some EQing on the master. We'll get to that. Um, let's have a look at the BVs, <clears throat> backing vocals. Just going to unmute them and solo them all. Um, I will want to pop, pop all these into their own bus. First, let's just have a bit of a listen um, first to uh, Glenn's. Curry! down the road that I must travel now these guys have a different sound to everyone else a curry through the darkness of the night what I want to do first is I want to bust those to their own little pair um Glenn's BVs <clears throat> because to me I can hear a little I can hear a little sound in there let me show you what I'm hearing. I want to get rid of this particular um, high mid. A carry lazing through the darkness of the night. A carry lazing through the dark. A carry lazing through the darkness of the night. Carry lazing where I'm. A carry. That's the sound right there. That's the EQ. So 2.6. Every singer has their frequency. A curry lays on through the darkness of the night. Curry lays. There's another one. There's another one. Isn't where curry lays and where I'm going. Will you follow? A curry lays on a highway in the light. Darkness of the night, darkness of the night. There we go. So uh, again, 
just low cut. Curious and where I'm going, will you follow? Don't need a lot of these guys, they're up pretty pretty loud. And, on a highway in the... and then I'm going to pop that in the BV bus with everything else. So let's uh, let's have a listen to what we've got in the BVs up here. There's two of me singing uh, a unison. One from my Okay, so this is your old 58. So let let's make a 58 and give it a bit of life. Get rid of the bottoms that are not needed, you know, below 80 hertz. We're backing vocals here. There's a little bit of dusty mids here. Just going to pull them out a bit. That's just basic. Um, I'm going to apply that to my other mic just by doing a drag and, and drop. Holding option, same EQ too. Brad's voice um, doubled in the middle. And down the road that I must travel. And He's got a really nice high mid sound, so I'm going to leave that in. Just, just pull him back. There's Dave and Con doing their parts here. It lays on down the road that I must travel. Career lays on where I'm going, will you follow? Dave's part is pretty crucial, and I only have one. Um, I might just use an L2 and slam it a little harder. Now, these are all dry. Um, there's no reverb on them, so let's have a listen to them together. Lays on down the road. Must travel. Uh, everyone here except for those last two, I'm going to bust through the bus. <clears throat> BVs. through the darkness of the night. Remember the 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 signature sound for this song is like seven to eight k. It's right here. Let's hear it. You hearing it? Pull out the middle. The darkness of the night. Remember backing vocals, they don't need to be in the middle. Lead singer's lead singer, so pull out that middle. Um, I think I've pushed Brad down a little bit too much. Down the road that I must travel. Then I'm going to want to uh, slam them a little harder. I do like um, the distressor for this sound. A curious through the darkness of the night. Oh, yes. A curious where I'm going, will you follow? Gotta make sure that these last two um, BVs are also in the BV bus. So that's the ones from Glenn. Down the road that I must travel. One extra bit of air. And then we're just going to add our, our reverb from there. I have a special reverb, Slate Digital Verb Suite. This is, you get this with the all you can eat. Straight out of the, out of the, um, of, as soon as you turn it on, FG 480's on there. Have a listen to this. The only thing is the reverb is a little bit midi, so the, what you're putting in is a little different to what you come out. So I'm going to go down to this little EQ and pull out the mids. 
Let's hear it all together and see how this is coming together. Now I noticed that uh, Glenn's vocal does push him out. Let's just make a little bit of room by turning Glenn down during the choruses. Just, you know, let's, let's make it uh, about two, three dB. <laughs> I'm pushing up my little keys arpeggiator there. So the real key is to get that um, seven to eight K air in the backing vocals. Let's have a listen to the thing. I just need to create a delay for his vocals. I'm gonna use a delay from Logic, the stereo delay. Take off some of the sibilance below 5k on both. No subs. A second note, a like half note, and maybe a dotted uh, crotchet. I'll also add it to that little flute guy. Delay. Now this guy also has has reverb on it piping reverbs, so all of your delays have reverb on them. I like that, I'm just gonna automate um, that so that delay to drop after he's, you know, once he starts singing. The wind blows hard against this mountain side. It's the one in there. Across the sea into my soul. The this is going great. We're gonna do a bit of a whip around on the, um, on the, with the air EQ, or the in, in, infinity EQ, sorry. In mono, around my speakers here. Pushing a little hard, so I'll definitely go to my slate um, mix rack on on the main pullback. I'll just give you uh, master channel. Just has a few of the other toys in it. I'm going to pull back the trimmer. Some earth, and I definitely want this one. The eleven. Very low level. 
levels in mono, you can pick out all sorts of things. But it's got that thickness, you know, that... So I, I would normally go straight to, and because I do a lot of these, I use Lander as my um, master. Um, you can see that Kiri's got a, f a few mixes in there <clears throat> over over time. So uh, my settings that I use in Lander are medium balanced. So I pay my yearly subscription for um, for Lander it's just to give me MP3s. Um, once I'm happy with my master, I could choose to get a um, a WAV if I want to buy it, or I pay more per year. <clears throat> um, so. The mix is pretty well done here. Um, the video itself, putting everyone's video into, um, into the setting is pretty crazy. Um, I'm sure that um, if you have seen the video, you'll see that the, um, I'll just give you a quick look here. Um, I've re-striped, so once I'm done with the master, done my mixes, I put the MP3 or the WAV into um, a Logic session, throw in the finished video and it's mix. And I EQ the final mix. I've got an EQ, I've just tweaked a little thing. So it's come out of the mastering program and I still want to take some things out. I've got a compressor in there just giving a little bit back. So, um, you know, in the, in, the, in the end, it still gets processed one more time after mastering for me. She's not an EQ. So I won't play you the whole video because um, it's in the description. I'd love you to go and check out the band. Um, I hope that um, that we've all learned something from, from this. Um, my approach is different to everyone else's. And hey, I really love making these videos because, um, and I'm really um, encouraged by your comments and um, I'm trying to find uh, as much time as I can to get back to you guys with, with who have questions and, and stuff. I'm just a... Um, just a guy in South Australia who um, built a studio in my house and um, you know I've been producing for, for a fair while and play keyboards and sing but um, this is my love and this band is um, definitely a great um, example for me to show you my technique and my approach um, and now we're all learning how to make videos and things like that as well it's, it's pretty full on but hey look if you like this please share it and subscribe and um, I'll see you in the next mix see you later